how did a shell create a fashion? And how high is your house? And how does virtual reality work? your mark camel well you buy a really nice outfit and you impress people with it That's nice try you no you can Gather. do graffiti writing your name but that gets you in trouble doesn't it no i mean how can you make your mark instantly and dramatically on those around you let me show you how now for this experiment i need someone totally uncoordinated fairly slow of wit and a bit of adult topping ah the very <laughs> Somehow man i, knew I you. want to <laughs> test your coordination okay. here's a piece of paper with a cross on it there is a 10p piece okay. take the 10p piece between the thumb and forefinger of the left hand shut your eyes roll it down your forehead down your nose across your mouth down your chin what, like try that? and get it yes try and get it on the cross if you on can. the cross on the cross have a good go there. my god that was that was more coordinated than i possibly thought i've just made a little mark there so you can see clearly where it was okay. have another go okay, okay shut your eyes down your forehead down your nose there's a good boy that's it working ever so well down your chin have another try i oh, rolled my eyes didn't i <laughs> oh, never mind doesn't really matter toppy we can excuse little things like that and i'll just make another little mark there so we know exactly where it is and have one more go and i'm aiming for the center you're aiming for the center of that cross this is working jolly well <laughs> <laughs> lovely have another go there's a good boy there that's gonna be the center. too bad but there we are i think i've made the point that's how you make your mark i've really made my mark on you haven't i i don't think you quite understand yet let me show you. There we are. Have a look in that mirror. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear, dear, All dear, you dear. do is, when they put the coin on the piece of paper, rub it round pretty pretty strong with a pencil. It goes straight on the fool's face. That's how you make your mark. Carol. <laughs> Very good. Now, how does virtual reality work? Sort of computer game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're talking about the 3D computer game where you wear a helmet and it generates a computer. But how does it work? I don't know how. Ah, well, you're quite right. It is a three-dimensional computer game, as opposed to two dimensions, which you see on a normal flat television screen. Now, how does it work? Well, let's do this experiment. Take a piece of paper, roll it into a cylinder, put that cylinder up to one eye, and then put your hand against the piece of paper, but keep both eyes open. Now, what do you see? You can see a hole straight through the middle. Yeah, I... Carol, I can see you right through my hand. Well, virtually. Yes, you have <laughs> a virtual image because that's not the reality of it at all. And what the brain is doing is it's taking an image from one eye, taking another image from another eye, and putting the two together to give you a three-dimensional virtual image. Yeah, but what has this got to do with a computer game? Ah, well, walk this way, Freddie. Yeah. We'll have another experiment to conduct. I want you to pop yourself inside this virtual reality game. Am I going on this? You are. It's Am great. I? Yes. Is this wise? Yes, I'm sure it is. Now put the helmet on. Helmet on? Yep. Okie dokie. And there. then you want to put on the backpack, which will loop backpack. round. Yes, loop round your waist. Right. And in that backpack, there's a I'm handgun. In. If you can get that out. Now, there are sensors inside the helmet and the handgun, so the computer knows exactly where Fred is looking and reaching at any time. Now, the computer holds within its database all the information about the virtual world. It knows what's there, what Fred is fighting with, where he's looking, where he's reaching. And by putting all that information together, it can feed virtual images to Fred. Now, this is what Fred is seeing. We're only seeing it in two dimensions because it's on a flat television screen. Now, the computer feeds through to the left eye screen uh, a certain image, and then it's feeding through a slightly offset image to the right eye screen. And the brain takes those two images and combines them, just like it did with the hand and the piece of rolled up paper, to give a virtual three-dimensional image. So what's it like, Fred? Well, it's a quite extraordinary. I'm actually there. It's not playing. I'm actually in there. And I'm going to smash this door open. Can you hear me hitting it? I'm in there. Now. 
and I can hear creepy things and there's some stairs there to my right and I'm going up these stairs and there's a funny little man at the top and I don't think he's friendly and I'm going to hit him with my sword. Get off. You get off. Got him. Can I get out now? Of course you can. While you're still alive, Fred. And that's how virtual reality works. They use virtual reality for games and things now. What's going to happen in the future? Well, potentially, of course, you could go for a holiday in the Bahamas from the comfort of your own armchair. Or what's happening at the moment is car designers are feeding information into a computer from all parts of the globe. And the designers can then drive around in a virtual world without ever having to build a prototype. Wow. So that is how virtual reality works with the aid of a piece of paper and, of course, your hand. How do you get the lead in a pencil? Well, just drop it in, just drop it in the hole. Nope. No, you inject molten graphite. Uh, nope. How does the lead get in a pencil? Well, the answer is rather like this. You're ridiculous. You're <laughs> bread and margarine and <laughs> sausages. You're doing a cafe. Thing. Okay, watch carefully, watch carefully. Piece of bread, piece of bread, spread the margarine or the butter or whatever on the bread, like so, nice yeah. and evenly. Mm hmm. Take the frankfurter or veggie sausage or whatever, place it in, put on the top bit of the bread like that, and what have I made? A oh, hot, hot dog. dog. What's it got to do with a pencil? Well, believe it or not, the way that pencils are made is exactly the same as the way a hot dog is made. A pencil starts off life like this, as a piece of flat wood, like so, and what happens then is grooves are then cut into the wood there like that right and then the lead is dropped into those grooves and of course pencil lead these days isn't lead it's either graphite or clay or wax or a mixture in the case of colored pencils and then um, the adhesive is spread on the glue and then another piece of groove wood is slapped on the top there that's put under massive pressure and you get something that looks like that already you see it's starting to look like a pencil mm -hmm. that is then grooved into a shape like this along the top see that it's starting to look like a pencil and then very quickly you've got pencils mm -hmm. like that and if you don't believe me that that's how pencils are made if you take a pencil from your pencil case at home and look at the end you'll see that it is in fact made from two separate pieces of wood top and bottom so if anybody asks you how does the pencil get its lead and you tell them it's just like a hot dog. That's how. <laughs> how did a shell create a fashion? Well, you get lots of shells together, put one elastic round your neck. No, no, no. Fred's is. talking about oh, those awful shell no, suits. Surely. No, no, I'm not. I'm talking about a how full of wonderment and discovery. A shoe was off how. Come with me back through time to an ancient land in the eastern Mediterranean where the Phoenicians used to live. They had beautiful beaches and they used to like to walk on their beaches. But as they did so, they noticed something rather strange happened. Their feet, or the soles of their feet, changed colour, became stained with a beautiful sort of purple dye. And they realised that the reason for this was a shell, a shell called the Murex shell, which, when it's crushed, produces a purple dye. The problem was that to produce even the smallest amount of dye like that, you had to crush hundreds of these little shells. So they became very, very precious indeed. So precious, in fact, that this dye was reserved exclusively for people of royal blood. It wasn't for the hoi polloi anymore. Purple was for royalty. And it kind of retained that exclusive image until much, much later. Come with me now, back to the United Kingdom and the Royal College of Chemistry, the year is now 1853, and a young laboratory assistant called William Henry Perkins is frustrated because an experiment will not go right. In his frustration, he begins to throw away all his chemicals down the drain. And when they all mix up, watch what happened. Oh. He had produced a beautiful artificial purple dye known as aniline purple mauve. And not all that long afterwards, Britain's first dye manufacturing plant was set up. And so, purple was no longer a royal exclusive colour. And so, that's how a shell created rather a dashing fashion. Quite dashing. Now, how can I always win at snooker? You mm -hmm. always win snooker. Freddie, I challenge you to a game. You're on. <laughs> 
Mm -hmm. yes, now then, there's a cue for you there. I just put a little bit of chalk on the end of mine. And uh, over to the match commentator. Hello and welcome to the crucial theatre as Vorderman uh, misses the ball completely. She was playing for there. Never the greatest, but Fred Dyne, the grand champion of the southern region there, sets up his shot and it's the ease with which he just puts that one away. Oh, no, you never win because you've got again. to hit the ball. Well, if I always hit the ball, will I win? If you always hit the ball, of course you'll win eventually. All right. But you've got to hit the ball. Okay, well, all right, I'm not very good, I admit. On this table, but I have another table over here. Another which table? I've, another table, which I brought from home. And uh, here it is. Well, what is it? It's a special elliptical snooker table. Ooh. <laughs> Yes, well, you hit it. I hit it. Do it again. And again. Yes, and again. All right, third time lucky. Go on, do it okay. again. Okay, and again. Well, how does it work? It works because an ellipse is a special mathematical shape. And here we have one ball at one focus. And over here we have the other ball at the other focus. Now, if I hit this ball from one focus against the edge, it will always be reflected back to the other focus. And therefore, it will always hit the ball. And I've worked out mathematically that if I always hit the ball, then I've got a very good chance of always winning at snooker. So I'm sticking to this table. It takes a special table for Carol to win at snooker. Yeah. Um, how high is your house? Two stories. Okay, Carol, how high is your house? Well, it's bigger than your house. It must be uh, oh, at least three stories. Yeah, but what about the actual height? How, how um, do you know how high your houses are? Look, Toppy, you measure it with a tape measure, you yeah. dumb dumb. No, you don't need a tape measure. I've got something to show you. This is brilliant. Um, you measure it with your body, and you need to place your body into a very specific position, which is this. Now, what? Carol... Um, I'm going to need you to help me demonstrate mm -hmm. this how, okay? Can you stand you about will. there? Yep. Okay, now I need to walk away from you counting my steps. Here we go. That's one, two, three, four. Oh, four there. Right. Now, what are you doing? I'm trying to see the top of your head through my legs. Yes. Where I, can you see now, then? I can see just um, below your chin. So just that's four here. steps. Five steps. That's your eyes. Six steps. That's the top of your head. Clear now. Good. Right. right. Now, Carol, how tall are you? I'm five feet six, which is about one meter seventy. -ish. Okay. Now, I know that if I bend over and make that angle, that five foot six, one meter seventy, is six paces away from me. Now, simple mathematics says if I were to make the same angle again and walk twice the distance away, mm. I would be able to see twice your height two carols it's a brilliant system all you have to do is get over like this and look for the top of your measure enough, there. Of this. Yeah. enough of this you're a nice enough fella yeah. you know give or take the odd brain so you're quite right but you if you want to measure anything you use a tape measure no right? no fred fred this system does away with tape you measures. need a tape measure no, you don't let's yes, put this do. to the test how at the how house oh it's about time we found out how high the house of how is anyway, Fred. Use this. No, no, you've got to do the bending over now, Fred. Carol, mm -hmm. stand against the oh, house so Fred can do a standard yes. measurement. Oh, bend over until you can see Carol. I can't, can't see her. Are you, have, look further. I still can't Travel see her. Travel further away. I can see her now. There you go. That's okay. good. Right, I'm going to get out to mine. What did I say mine was? Six, yeah. three, so Fred four, can see this five, my head. six. Yes, but I'm miles in front of you. Why? That's because it's a personal measurement, Fred. You're, you can't bend as far as me, so you need to be further away. This is ridiculous. It's the same thing. No, I'm going to use my tape measure and I'm going to go inside oh. the house because I'm fed up with this whole We'll carry on anyway, Carol. Right, that's six steps the top of your head. Yes, that's now, right. Let's go. Let's see what we yeah. eight, nine, eight, that's ten steps. And how far can you see? I can see the top window, Carol. You do look stupid, you know. Oh, you're not telling me that now, are you? Yeah, hang on. Like, right, like 14, 15, uh, 18 steps, and yeah. I can see the chimney, and there's something coming out of it. Very difficult. Oh, it's, it's, it's all jammed up in the chimney. Okay, now, Carol, yeah. uh, the roof of our house, I can see at 18 steps. Yes. And you were six steps. Yes. So that's three carols high. Mm -hmm. That's about five metres. About five metres. Yeah. Fred, what do you make it? Don't know, because I'm all tangled up. Oh, that's silly. Well, that's how high the how house is. Try yeah. measuring your house at home. And uh, that's how oh, for now. Yeah. Yeah, not 
going to bend over. I think that's silly. <laughs>